Hello everybody, I'm back. I'm sorry I haven't made a video in a while, uh, but today I'm going to uh, do one uh, that I've been wanting to do for at least about a month now, but it's probably just as well because I'm still tinkering away at this project. Um, I wanted to talk a little about my uh, Goodwill pickup that I found uh, back at the beginning of December. And um, this is a Arcade 1UP Pac-Man that someone had dropped off at Goodwill uh, that they were selling for $50. It's the Gen 1 Pac-Man with Pac-Man Plus. Um, I got it off even cheaper due to a military discount thanks to my sister. I just <laughs> happened to go over there the one day. I really don't go over to Goodwill too often and it was almost like it was meant to be. I went back to the furniture section and uh, there it was. I, I was gobsmacked to see this just sitting there at a Goodwill for $50. Um, the big drawback though uh, was it didn't work. It has a, um, it, it, it booted up, the menu came up, the buttons seem to work uh, because you can choose from two different games. You can choose from Pac-Man and Pac-Man Plus. Uh, most of these arcade one-up units have a little selection of games. At least, at least these first gens only have one or two. Uh, Galaga, Galaxia, and Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, for instance, here. And um, the newer ones now can have up to, like, 12. As a matter of fact, these little guys here, um, you can get, uh, like, five games, four games on each, just for like, the little counter cates. Um, th these units usually sell for about maybe $300 new, um, and uh, can go up to a lot higher in price these days. This is a Gen 1 model, so the um, refinements weren't quite as good as they are these days. Um, I've made some alterations. Uh, the thing booted up. Um, you were unable to actually play a game on it, though. Uh, there were no returns at Goodwill because of this. So um, it's in really excellent condition, though, considering. And... Um, even for the money for $35 is what I paid out the door. Uh, it, even if you, it's a fixer upper, I figured if I could fix it and play Pac-Man, that's fine. I replaced the buttons. It was a no go, which I had a feeling wasn't going to work. I think it's a PCB issue. Uh, so I just figured eventually I would get to just throwing a um, raspberry Pi in it. And that's what I did. And I did some other little modifications and I'm feeling pretty confident enough to share the results at this point. Um, the only big problem with it, unfortunately, is you can maybe see some. It's a little hard to see. It's a little bright in here. The weather's kind of changed a bit. And I apologize for some of the wind outside. There are some really little scratches here and there that, that kind of annoy me. But, hey, what are you going to do? You can see one right there. Um, unfortunately, I don't know. I guess the person who turned this in just got tired of it not working and well i uh took the rewards with me so anyway uh, i'm going to take you for a little tour of what this thing does and what i've done to it and uh hopefully uh you'll be a little bit entertained or interested so um i'll just start with the outside first before we go into the depths of it um when i originally got this this, this had a uh, a nice Pac-Man graphic all over it. It had a single joystick here for Pac-Man. It's Pac-Man, so you don't really need um, enough, tons of buttons or anything. That's all it's playing. So there was a hole here uh, that had a um, RK1 up uh, stick for the Pac-Man. Um, over here, there were two holes because for the two buttons. There was a select uh, player one and uh, insert credit. Um, Swap them out for rudimentary ones here and I'm going to take this open and just show you what I did inside in a minute uh, but uh, what I did was I ended up having to make alterations to this piece now the problem with these decks these early ones especially is that the um, the the artwork it didn't have plexiglass on these gen ones I know that some of them do now actually a lot of them do now even these little guys have it to kind of protect that artwork and um unfortunately just in the span of a week 
of, of just even sitting here um, messing with it and, and your hand leaning on this paint, uh, it, it, it would rub off and get all the side of your hand. It was nasty and disgusting. So in the, in the midst of, of going in and converting this to a Raspberry Pi uh, interface and making it more usable, obviously, I've uh, had to do some uh, modifications in that respect, too, just to kind of give it a cleaner look. So uh, what I've done is um, ran over the, the original art, unfortunately, with... Uh, well, unfortunately, that's a shame that the artwork can't be used, but it just looks nasty and dirty. Um, this uh, nice carbon vinyl that I picked up off Amazon for six bucks. Uh, it was my first attempt, and I, I think it came out pretty decent. Um, I have enough here that I could do another run eventually, but um, it's got a nice uh, sheen to it. And uh, it's pretty fingerprint resistant. And, uh, I mean, there's a little little edging here that I could have probably done a little better, but um, this is pretty much played in a, in a darker room. And I, I've actually apologized. It's the, the lighting in here is getting awful. If I open these blinds, oh, it's going to be even worse. Um, this weather is crazy. So um, what I did was, uh, when I open it up, it'll, you'll be able to see it a little better. But I took the um, single hole that this was, th there were three holes originally, as I said, for the coin, player one. There's a joystick hole here. I, I repurposed them. I made a, a just turned a one hole into a button. Uh, I drilled a using a step bit tool, uh, nicely provided to me by my brother. I uh, drilled a hole here for the uh, a new stick. Uh, I put a, a second button, a third button, and then just reuse those old buttons there. The one thing I did do, and I considered early on, do I even want to do this? And now looking back, I probably should have just maybe not even done this. I kept the arcade one up original hole ports here. Um, I was thinking somewhere down the line, maybe I would use these buttons I, I know you can actually mod these buttons now to power on and off your or even adjust volume etc for on, on the raspberry pi itself just running to the uh, the io board um but it, it doesn't even look like it might be even worth the effort to be honest with you um this is a gen one and it doesn't have those uh, the newer ones where it's like a little bit of a spring to adjust the volume in that respect and even the power button here um, I'm thinking of a different modification overall. Uh, I'm actually considering putting these now maybe up here and just boring these out a little uh, bigger. And um, I'm considering putting uh, a spinner here and maybe just an al alternate, you know, a fourth button there for whatever, maybe a menu selection or um, I've actually used that button um, for, for a couple other games like in Punch-Out as the um, Super Punch-Out as a knockout or, or the duck button um, occasionally. Uh, but I wanted to keep it simple. This is a vertical screen because um, it's Pac-Man. So uh, the games that I, I plan to go with here are going to be vertical related. Um, and that's why, and, and, and I'm a classic gamer. I, I don't need, I don't even need Street Fighter for crying out loud. So, um, I mean, not that Street Fighter is not classic, but you know what I mean. I, I was looking to keep a lot of the old 80s stuff. I wanted to keep that going. Stuff that's easy to play, pick up and go, um, is just simple enough for a single player to sit and have a good time with. Um, and thinking of that, I, I went through a bunch of vertical games, especially that I know I prefer to play, and ones that would maximize the amount of buttons needed. So I figured at the very least I needed three buttons uh, for something like Gunsmoke, because in Gunsmoke you can fire in three directions, left, right, middle, and hybrid between uh, a fourth button would be nice I guess but and even then I'm thinking should I put one there but eh. at the time I drilled these holes I was trying to be respectful of the artwork that was underneath this and that was before I realized how crappy the application of said artwork was that it was going to rub off on my hands um, otherwise because this joystick was literally between a ghost and pac-man I didn't want to hide their art so now unfortunately I mean, in the long run, this is fine. You have enough room to rest, but I probably would have maybe preferred to have um, maybe moved these buttons a tad over and then put a fourth one right, right here, Neo Geo style. Um, but you know what? Hey, I'm not going to complain. I I'm perfectly thrilled with what I got out of this thing uh, for the cost. I mean, uh, putting this whole thing together, as you will see, I think I totaled about $111 
including the cabinet itself. Um, I, the monitor came with it. There's a speaker in there came with it, the framing. Uh, this is probably the most incredible find I've ever had uh, in terms of that respect. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm just kind of going over a little thing, some little, little add-ons. Um, before I open it up and show everybody inside, I'm going to just take around the back real quick before I open this up. Um, since I've um, been messing with this for the past month or so, I decided to add these uh, LED strip lights to the back panel. Uh, have them, they, they're shockingly staying on. I, I wasn't sure if it was going to connect very well with the wood. Uh, but, I mean, this whole strip, it's a, it's a nice RGB strip. It even comes with a, a little remote and everything. I can adjust the colors. And it, it cost me like, I think 12 bucks. And you, you get like 16 feet or something of that nature. Um, so going down a little bit, you can see it goes all the way around. And eventually this actually sits over in a corner across the room. And when you lean it up against the wall, it gives off this really nice little uh, retro um, glow to the room, uh, the corner, just nice and subtle. So I have the adapter for the LED. Uh, attached right here to the uh, back panel and this is the power supply for that LED strip that I just run through the already existing power uh, cable hole for the uh, RK1 up so it, it just fell right into place that just loops around there's a little IR here for the receiver um, this is the, the little main the main um, the plug that comes out from the power strip that is inside here that I put in I just kind of uh, dug out a little hole so that that's flush. Uh, one of my other mods I'm thinking about doing is adding a uh, outside power connection to make it have a little cleaner of a look. So everything is inside and I can just run one wire independently out along with a, a power button that I can just come back and click it on. Because right now, unfortunately, I have to plug it into the wall to power it up. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show this in a little bit. But uh, I'm going to take a second. I'm not going to bore everybody. I'm going to take these uh, out now when I give a tour of the inside and all the modifications I've made inside. And I'm just going to take these screws out real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so voila. There we go. Um, as I said, we have this here. This attaches to the LED power, which goes inside the power because I have the um, power strip inside. So all I have to do is feed this through and lift this up and this whole panel just pops right off and i can put it right over here for now and we can take a look at the frankenstein workings inside the machine so uh, i'll do a quick pan down we can take a look i'm going to go over everything real quick looks like i got a little dirty still back here it's funny how you move things around and stuff shifts so all right First, we'll start the interesting part. Uh, this is the back of the RK1 Up monitor. Obviously, this is not insulated. So, uh, this there's one cable coming out of there. There's no HDMI interface, uh, anything of that nature that you can just rudimentary plug and play go. Um, everything's uh, RK1 Up. So, you have to find a way to uh, make a bypass. Um, so, first of all, You'll see this. I got some painter's tape here, and it's just a piece of cardboard to keep this board insulated. Um, a lot of this was due to um, ETA Prime's uh, little tutorial on how to get a nice, cheap inner working um, conversion going for RetroPie. And I I've seen people say it's, it's a terrible thing, but I, it's been working great for me. I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, it was a very neat little inner uh, step by step. Thing he did and I thought it worked out so I went along with a lot of his parts I, I agreed with his standard of you know you, you're you're owning a cheap product this is this is certainly not super high quality here so you're not gonna it's not like you're building a using a $500 PC or something you're you're using a $35 Raspberry Pi so let's keep the parts kind of in respect of that and you know go up from there uh, I ultimately probably the the most important uh, thing is going to be the controller parts, but that's give or take. Um, but in any case, what we have here is this is the RK1 up uh, wiring that comes out of the monitor. And uh, I believe it's a 17 inch monitor, if I'm not mistaken. 
Uh, it is a vertical monitor. It goes up there a little bit. Um, this is a, uh, I honestly, I have to put, maybe I can put the links in there. Uh, but you can get this off Amazon. This board was about $26. And what it does is it will convert the RK1 up uh, signal, the uh, port, uh, into an HDMI out, which is right here. Uh, you got an audio out, and then you have the power for the board. Um, and then this wiring here goes down to a separate little board that allows you to adjust the pots for the um, just some rudimentary little things left and right. Uh, you know, you can change around and mess around with some of the the video uh, angles and and, and uh, positioning. But I haven't really need, had to need to do that. It's it's pretty much plug and go. Um, just the brightness and so forth of that nature. It's not the highest quality monitor. There's a lot of um, a lot of uh, ghosting and, and not ghosting uh, around the edges. You know, the the screen kind of bleeds a bit. So, uh, but once the game's up and going, I, I you can barely notice it. You just sit straight ahead and look at it. I, I for what it is. Once again, we're dealing with uh, a, a cheap cheap device here. I'm not going to complain. Um, especially given the cost factor. Uh, but in any case, uh, this is the HDMI here. This takes you down. I'm going to make it a little brighter in here to the HDMI to the uh, Raspberry Pi, which is right here. And up here, we have a, this is the, this is the power cable. I always mix it up. This is the power cable. This is actually the RK one ups power cable that I reused to power this board. Uh, and that's down there situated. I just kind of taped that down so it doesn't shift all over and roll around. Um, and this is, like I said, this is technically one piece, I guess. I mean, you don't even, you probably don't have to pull, plug that in, but it's if you need to access the, the monitor uh, uh, settings. Uh, this is an audio jack cable, just a regular uh, stereo audio jack. That runs down now to this amplifier. This amplifier is how you're going to get sound through the existing RK1 up speaker, which I will show you in a moment. Um, those wires go up under here to the RK1 up speaker that is underneath the control deck, um, which you couldn't really see when I was showing you earlier because the vinyl is covering the holes. Uh, I was a little unsure if I was going to be able to do that because I don't want to muffle the sound, but this thing is plenty noisy. And, uh, I, I can't tell a difference. I mean, you're dealing with Donkey Kong. It's not like it's going to be stereo surround or anything. Uh, it's perfectly acceptable to me. Um, there's other options you can do for the speaker situation. But what I did was these are the yellow wires uh, that were connecting to the um, uh, the board of the RK1 up. I removed them uh, and reattached them. They are still attached rather to the main speaker, but. You run them behind here to this. I'm trying to get a good angle without having to remove. Actually, I could probably take this off a little bit. I velcroed uh, velcroed these all to the unit, so that way it makes everything kind of accessible to a point. But they run into the back of this amplifier. This amplifier was about fifteen dollars on Amazon. Uh, you can adjust the treble, the bass. I mean, like I said, once again, you're dealing with arcade beeps and bloops for the most part. Uh, so I don't know how much of a difference that's going to make. But in any case, the important thing is this will uh, drive sound from the uh, from the Pi. It, it, it gives you a, a little bit of a connection between the Pi, this board, to the video, to the out to the speaker. So between the three of them, they work and piggyback off each other to provide the sound that is outputted to that speaker. So... Um, Come down here. Once again, here's the Raspberry Pi. Just attach that right on there with some Velcro. This light is shifting all over the place. And uh, just kind of tidied up the wires a little bit. And all these wires run out to this uh, $4 power strip I got. So, and then therefore out to the floor to the to the uh, receptacle. So, uh, here, this is the loose wire that powers the LED strip outside, which I fed through earlier and showed you. Um, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, you, you get the board to drive the uh, video, you get the amplifier to drive the sound. Those two connect, therefore, into the Pi, uh, which just outloads everything into these connections. Um, 
nothing really much else to say about that. I've tried to keep it kind of clean. Neat. I mean, this is literally just wiring here, laying here. I was trying to lay it in a position where it wouldn't interfere with uh, with like each other and, and just slide around. Everything, I, I went and got this Velcro tape to kind of keep everything in position and so it wouldn't shift around. So um, let me uh, get this situated. I'm gonna pop off the uh, the control deck the best I can to show you how I have it wired under there. It's not a very good angle. So I'm gonna go and just take the whole front off. I'll be right back again. Okay, so uh, I've taken out the four screws I have here. Boom, 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 boom. They keep this down. It's actually pretty solid. Um, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with this part. It seems a kind of o overly thick, to be honest with you. Um, the, the buttons are, are, are really uh, shallow. So in any case, um, I'm just gonna pop this up a little bit. I can't go too crazy. I don't wanna stretch too many wires out, but it's enough that I can give you a view of what I have this situated and, and set up as. So there's the aforementioned speaker. You can see down there going out to the uh, amplifier. Um, there's player one, player two, the three buttons. You can see here the holes where the existing Pac-Man joystick used to be. Here is the new joystick here. Uh, I think it's a company called Sumetsu. My uh, brother was kind enough to uh, give this to me. Every time I open this up, I find more dust, even though I just cleaned this. Um, there's the existing RK1 up buttons that I'm that are not even connected. I just have them twist tied. Like I said earlier, I was thinking about reusing them, but unfortunately, I I don't think that's gonna really work out. Um, this is the uh, controller board for these buttons and everything just snaps together and that runs from the USB there. That's a USB cord for the, uh, the adapter for the buttons that goes out to the Raspberry Pi below. Raspberry Pi will accept it as basically plugging in like a joystick. Um, you have the blue, red, these are, uh, I think this whole kit right here, uh, well, the exception of the joystick because it did come with a joystick but this is a much higher quality one that my brother had given me and I appreciate that very much uh, there is a definite difference uh, but the kit itself with the joystick and the three buttons here plus these buttons I mean it's actually a set of eight buttons plus the coin and player one buttons was about 26 bucks and this uh, you know obviously this connection here uh, I don't think that was bad at all. I mean, and they're, I mean, are they the best buttons? Are they Sanwas? No, they're, they're cheap knockoffs. Uh, but their quality for the price is shockingly very good. And I, I would have to recommend it. Um, you don't have to do a bunch of connections here. I mean, it looks a little crazy, but these just snap right in. Um, the board itself is noted. There's a schematic. It can tell you where you want to put, put them in. And therefore, once you get this all going in RetroPie, uh, you're able to customize the entire loadout of how you want your buttons. Um, this is an eight-way stick here. Now, a lot of the older games used four-way, um, so there's a mixture apparent because I do like my uh, shooters. Um, you know, Don Patch and, and Arrow Fighters and, and Slap Fight, games of that nature, Truxton. So, um, I do want an eight-way. You definitely need the eight-way to, to, to get the most out of those games. Now they work, I mean, but obviously an eight-way isn't going to be as accurate as a, uh, say, like a Donkey Kong four-way or a Pac-Man four-way. But there's ways around it, and it's it's been working fine. Um, but in any case, yeah, the, the, that's pretty much all there is to this, the inner linings of it. Um, the fact that it all came together like this is uh, pretty cool. So... Uh, let me get this all sealed up and back to going and I'm just going to do a quick rundown of the software that I've been working on. That's been the most time consuming. I knew it would be the most time consuming. Um, like I said, this has been almost like a two month project now. Just trying to get it going the best I want. And every time I stop and think I'm done, I find something else I want to do. I mean, eventually what I want to do is go over to maybe Lowe's or something and trim down, see if they can cut me down some new plexiglass it's like 15 bucks this is the worst plexiglass in the world i mean i've used a microfiber and nothing you can see the scratches but in the dark room when you have a game on it's not too noticeable um the vinyl as i said this came out pretty decent 
I would love to show you what I what I put under it. Maybe I can insert a picture of what it looked like before. I may go over it again because I some of the stuff I cut a little short here. You can actually see the white from where the um, artwork underneath was is poking through. It's it's, it's so awful. Very low quality art uh, considering the price they charge. Um, so I'm going to seal this up and we're going to get going on the inner workings of the software. Be back again. And so I've moved the uh, cabinet back to its normal position in its corner in, this, in our little uh, family room here. Um, unfortunately, this is as dark as I could get it. I'd rather have it a little darker just to show off the screen a little better. But um, I'm going to plug this in now and show you how it works out. As you can see, the LEDs are blazing. Retro Pi is booting. This is a custom splash screen. I removed all the script as best I could. And it should boot right into the main system. Just like that. Uh, I forget if I mentioned these are LED buttons. Uh, and then this is the Sumetsu joystick. So uh, let me show you these LEDs real fast here. They're blazing along pretty well. It worked out fantastic. I'm, I'm really thrilled with that. It just it adds a nice retro 80s glow to it. So, um, and what's nice, it, it, like I said, it even came with a, a little remote, which I have right here. And allows you to cycle through colors at your disposal. I kind of keep it like a nice moody blue type of thing going. Maybe purple. Uh, just the brightness and everything so forth. The one thing um, I would love to work on figuring out is a volume um, situation where... I can adjust the volume. Each game seems to be either louder or quieter than the other. And um, that's still something I'm working on. Right now, for me to adjust the volume, I literally have to take the whole back panel off, go in and manually adjust the knob on that amplifier I was showing earlier. Um, I was thinking maybe a Bluetooth uh, volume control, even with my phone, I don't know. Uh, I just don't want anything stupid and noxious hanging out the front panels. Um, although I was thinking this piece right here, popping some holes over here and here and putting a, another speaker in there and just putting the buttons through, but, uh, I'll probably just leave it as it is. This isn't the, eh, the wood's not that bad, but I don't want to lower the, the, the strength. Um, so in any case, let me, let me get, I grab this nice little ottoman that I can sit on now. It's the perfect height. I measured it up here. Let me take you through some of this software and how this works. Um, so this is the main game list. It's just uh, default uh, RetroPie Carbon theme, which actually fits in perfectly because and there is a screensaver that will come in and just kind of do, you sit too long. Uh, you get some flyer shots. Uh, you can see the carbon and it, funny enough, matches this pretty well. So I said, you know what, I'm going to stick with that. Gives it a nice uh, even feel. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to scroll through. Like I said, my main objective here was to do a vertically oriented arcade. I mean, you can't get these vertical screens normally like the way you'd want them uh, without some kind of uh, setup. I mean, no, everybody's got just regular TVs and monitors. Sure, you can flip them, etc. But hey, this one came with this system. And vertical games, I love the shooters. So... I want to play them at the right aspect ratio. Um, and funny enough, this screen isn't the highest resolution. So what happens is, uh, as a, as a, a thanks, thankfully to that, uh, even the horizontal games that I have added on here, um, just some of my personal favorites. Um, you can see a couple on the list already. Uh, Alien Syndrome and Altered Beast are both horizontal games. They actually surprisingly fill the screen pretty well um, because of that lower resolution. Uh, it's it's probably more like 80% instead of maybe 50 or 60 uh, of the screen, real estate. So um, 
let's just start with something simple here. Let's start with 1942. But first, I want to give a quick little overlay on how these buttons work. Um, I set this up so that the blue button will select the game, the red button will take you back, and the C button, I guess, just cycles down the list. Uh, I look at it. It looks like it ran. Yeah, it's the randomizer right here. This button X. So I never really <laughs> noticed that before, to be honest with you. So um, back is red. That takes you back. I have simply arcade and RetroPie. You hit the blue button to select. You get your options for the RetroPie here. Uh, for the sake of this video, I've been doing a lot of play testing and uh, configuring emulation and so forth. So what I'm going to do is turn that off because I don't want that to get in the way. I have that enabled right now. So we're going to back out of that. You won't see any of this under normal play, though. I mean, when this thing boots up, it's right here at this list of games. So let me start down the list a little bit. Let's start right at the top with 1942. As you can see, uh, you got the artwork. I like this theme. Most of these themes are a mess. Um, I, I don't know. It, it, these people can obviously maybe program, but a lot of the themes, I, I'm sorry, it, don't take this personally, but I, I very weird. I, I like less is more, but functional pertinent information. I don't need a bunch of flash. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Uh, but for me, a lot of these themes just don't work out. And I, I just ended up sticking with the bare basics. This is all you need. I mean, you got a list of games, you got some artwork, you got this cool little scrolling history about the game and sometimes just descriptions, whatever. I've actually learned some neat stuff for just saying you're looking at this. It tells you how many players, which obviously just one on this. Get your, it's just it's it's just functional. I like it. Um, that's not to put anybody aside. I mean, hyperspin, things like that in nature have their place. Uh, but this is just a simple rudimentary dustbin, you know, and, it, and for this purpose, it works great. So, um, and it's, it's nice and snappy. Uh, so one of the things you can do is I have, the, first of all, let's talk about the buttons a little more. Um, hitting this button here will bring up your main menu. I factored it to the player one button and that allows you to scrape for the art. Uh, which I've already done. This thing's all obviously connected to Wi-Fi. You can go in and change themes here. You can change all your settings back out with red. Um, normally what I do when I shut it off, I want to make sure the Pi shuts down properly. So I hit quit and then I'll just do shut down system and yank the plug. So it has a nice clean um, break um, until I figure out the switch situation. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you, you pretty much don't need a lot of this stuff unless you're looking to... Uh, when, most of this stuff is just really for when you first get started. You can go in and change the game's information here. Um, there's 1942. This is all the scraper metadata. Um, what I've done was, I actually meant to mention it, on the back of the Pi, I did plug in a Bluetooth receiver uh, for my little Logitech keyboard, which which is great because I can just shove it right inside my ottoman here. So anytime I need to access a keyboard, pull it out, boom, I don't have to open it up and have a bunch of wires. I can just go in. Some of the some of this, uh, these games have weird titles that throw the scraper off sometimes. Um, I'll save that. I don't know why it's even up there. Back out. All right. So let's cut to the chase here. I'm gonna try to play and film at the same time to a point. Uh, but let's start with 1942. Let's take a moment. But there you go. Fresh coin. Order in, player one. So there you go, you're moving around. Funny enough, I think there's a little bit of a delay on the screen, on the camera, you want to push the button. You shoot, you do your flip, move around. Uh, this game in particular saves scores. That's one thing I'm working on right now. I'm trying to get all these games to properly save their scores. Some of them are a little more fidgety. If I want to get out of the game, um, what I can do is push both these buttons at the same time. Uh, the inside UI uh, hotkeys are binding. So what I did was I have the coin button in yellow will bring up 
the retro arc menu. So anytime I want to adjust shaders, I can adjust. It's all inside, unfortunately. I, I guess I could probably flip it, but I've just gotten used to it. I, I don't even sometimes, I don't even have to tilt my head anymore. I've gone through this so many times. I pretty much know where all my things are. But you can go in here and you can go to your quick menu, for instance. Hit quick menu, you can go down and uh, you can adjust controls. Some, some of these games, the controls have to be fixed a little bit. Um, just because everybody's got their buttons laid out differently. Uh, but back out, back out, quick menu resume, takes you right back to the game. Um, there's no way to accidentally do that. You have to literally hit a coin and this yellow button at the same time. So I, I tried to make it idiot proof just in case anybody comes over and wants to play. They won't have any issues. So we're going to get out of 1942, and it's as simple as pushing both those buttons at once. And there you go, you're back to your main menu. Um, as I said earlier, I was thinking about adding maybe a fourth button at this point, just because these are pretty much useless now in the scheme of things. I, I, I probably won't ever use them. Um, and I may just drill these open, pop these up here, and put a fourth button here. And my next thought is a spinner right here, just to, to play those couple games uh, like Tempest and Arkanoid. Uh, I think that'd be pretty cool uh, to have all that, especially with this vertically oriented screen. Um, but yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, let me see what else can we do. All right, here, here's a horizontal game, Black Tiger, one of my favorites, uh, Shane R. Monroe of Monroe World. He knows all about this game. I know he's a big fan as well. Check him out. Sorry, my lighting's really wacky here. There you go. So it's a vertical game. We're going to put a quarter in. Actually, that's a little strange. I'm going to have to look into this because I just noticed my ice core is not there. So I, I've i noticed that uh, I think this might be running on Final Burn. That was another thing I wanted to mention earlier. Um, the reason I went back and fixed that setting was you can load this thing up with various emulators. MAME 2003, MAME 2000 Plus, three, um, excuse me, 2003 Plus, uh, Final Burn, um, MAME 2010. Um, so... Each each emulator is going to run things a little differently, have different settings. Um, some of the final burn stuff I've noticed is having issues with these high scores, and I've been racking my head over it to the point where I'm probably just going to go back to meme at some point. Uh, but I'm I'm still twiddling around. Um, but let me give you an idea how this horizontal looks. I, I think it looks pretty good. I I want to make sure I maintain the proper aspect ratios. And at first I wasn't sure if that was looking right, but does look right and and i think it's just because this is a lower resolution monitor that it's able to just kind of get in there and and you know portray the screen properly it's great i love this game i used to play this crap at the local pizza place back in the mid 80s so anyway um hit those go back as I said, these are a lot of oldies. I mean, a lot of people won't probably appreciate this uh, in the younger group, but these are the games I grew up with, like Burger Time, uh, Bump and Jump, Buck Rogers. These are games from, say, maybe 88, 89 and older, 80, 90, uh, the couple of early 90s games are on here, obviously, because I, I do love the my uh, shooters, or as people like to disgustingly call them, shmups. Um, sorry, but they're always going to be shooters to me. Um, I do have a couple of Neo Geo games on here because I love me some cross swords. Uh, unfortunately, and uh, shout out to ETA Prime. Uh, I'm sorry, there's not going to be any uh, Metal Slug or Buck Bunny on here. Um, I don't need. Uh, I'm not a. I'm not a Metal Slug guy to be honest with you. No offense, <laughs> but anyway, uh, Neo Geo is on here. I do love my cross swords. Um, couple other things I'm going to show you, because a couple games are kind of funny. So let me go down. And we've got Dimmu, who's fantastic. Uh, Don't Don Punch. Donkey Kong Jr., Donkey Kong Jr. Now these, <clears throat> for funny, it's funny enough, these actually run really well on Final Burn, I've noticed. The, the, the quality has just been better than it was on Name, in my opinion. Um, you have to put the samples in and everything else, obviously, but... Um, the high score saving is working as far as I can tell. Well, maybe not. My name's not there. Oh, maybe I, I might have just forgot. Hmm. Anyway, I'll have to work on that. As I said, this is a work in progress. So, uh, I've been doing a lot of twiddling around with this thing. 
But I wanted to get a video out, and I have a lot of files backed up that I gotta re-put back on. I probably just removed my high scores by mistake. Um, one game I want to show you real quick because it's to me one of the more impressive in terms of how it worked out. Uh, I did add a couple of neat things here. Uh, Miss Pac-Man, you got Miss Pac-Man here, but I wanted the superior fast hack. Um, I had to look around a bit. I ended up editing in a little chip on there that I found on a Google search so I can differentiate. Um, but I want to show you everybody uh, punch out. Because I'm really impressed with how Punch Out came out. Now, this isn't your daddy's uh, Mike Tyson Punch Out. This is, or your Mike Tyson. This is daddy's Punch Out. This is the arcade Punch Out that had the two big screens. So it's really cool because this thing is able to nicely fit both screens at a proper aspect ratio right in there. So let me just get a name in there. Now, the big problem, this game's not a problem, but however, I'm not going to be able to do this with one hand. There's no way. Even Glass Joe, I'm not that good. Yeah. So anyway, I, I just really impressed on how that came out. Um, what I was going to say was Super Punch Out, on the other hand, I, I forgot all about it. It had a, uh, where you could pull on the stick upwards to do a duck. Um, so I had to figure out a way around that. So in the meantime, what I did was I set it to free play and I simply made this player one button, a, um, the, uh, a duck, uh, not the duck, but the, I made the duck button over here. I made this button, the, uh, knock them out button, the punch out button, because I figure you're going to be doing a lot more ducking than, than necessarily pulling off one of those big punch out throws. Um, so for a game like that, I figure that's no big deal. That's just a throwaway button for couple of things. Another game I was um, a big fan of is Quiz and Dragons. Um, that requires four buttons, uh, A, B, C, and D. Uh, basically a Neo Geo loadout. So once again, I've made that free play. I made A, B, C, D is the player one button. So that way I can select answer number three or number four, number whatever. And I have all the buttons there. It's a, a trivia uh, dice rolling thing from Capcom. Um... The other thing is I made sure to only put the games on here that actually work. Uh, given this is a Raspberry Pi 3B, um, I'm not going to be able to throw everything in the kitchen sink at this thing. So uh, th these games are just older and they are um, easy to play. They will run. There's not going to be any issues. Anything that didn't really run too well, I just took it out. And luckily, 90% of the stuff I want to play runs great. Um, some real deep cuts in here, which is really cool. Because by doing this, I've actually discovered some neat games. There's Truxton. I know there's a lot of big fans of Truxton out there. Let's get Truxton going. Let's get a nice shooter. So, so my next step is, uh, to, this is only a 4 gigabyte uh, Class 4 card I had laying around. I didn't think I'd be using a lot of space. Well, unfortunately, I have. I've ended up filling this thing up pretty good. This lighting is so weird. Because I also turned on the uh, scan line effect. So some of the games give off a weird... Due to the camera, you don't really see them in person, but on the on the camera here, you're probably going to see some weird effects. But I want to upgrade that four gig card, maybe put on a 16 or something of that nature, just make it a little bigger and put some more higher resolution flyer art on there. So there you go. Certainly can't play that one-handed. Um, but I think that about wraps it up. I think I've pretty much gone over and said what I wanted to do. I just really couldn't wait to show this thing off. It's still a little bit of a work in progress. I think I've got it dimed in for the most part. It's probably about 90% the way I want it. Um, right now, like I said, I'm just messing around with high scores and getting things working in that respect. Um, but uh, yeah, um, actually, now that I think about it, I think I know exactly what my high score is in there because I... Put in a new uh, high score that that overwrote my old one, which I do have backed up. So I'm gonna have to fix that later. Um, but in any case, uh, thank you again for uh, showing up. And I'm sorry I haven't had a video in a while. I had a little bit of a health crisis, which is luckily working itself out. But I took the day off to chill, and I thought I would uh, take some time while it's relatively quiet and nothing's going on to just do a quick walkthrough. 
So I, I hope you enjoyed this. I don't know what game I just hit by accident there, but it must be a big one because it's taken a few minutes to load. Um, that's why I want to get a new card also, maybe something a little more. There, that eh, figures it was. There you go, that's Brad. Okay. Anyway, I love the size of this thing, by the way. It's perfect, just sitting in the corner here. Measured this little stool so you can just sit here and chill. Everything works really well. So if by chance you make it to a goodwill, maybe luck out and pass out seeing a freaking arcade cabinet, arcade one-up cabinet in your uh, department's uh, 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 furniture section of the store, the furniture department of uh, goodwill. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm on the lookout for a horizontal one. Another thing I would like to do is uh, maybe get a little marquee here, but like 50 bucks or something for these aftermarket ones. And I don't know. It would be cool to have, but once again, I'm trying to stay kind of under budget. I mean, I got pretty much where I want it. Plexiglass is another thing. Um, doesn't seem to be too expensive. But something like these lights, I think, really add to the atmosphere. And at night, it looks really cool. So, in any case... Thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate everybody stopping by, and uh, I will see you next time. I've got some other videos I really want to get to go into to do. So thanks. Peace out. Take care.